We are John and Catherine Iverson, and this is our dog, Kaya. In the summer of 2022, we decided to pack all of our stuff and move across the country to North Carolina. Come explore this beautiful state with us and follow along as we make this house our home. Well, hello everyone. Um, just me and my dog here. You want to say hi? Huh, you're going to hang out with me while I talk? Today is March 15th. It's Friday. Um, as you can tell by the title of the video, I'm going to be going into detail about my, my most recent pregnancy that ultimately ended up not working out about 12 weeks. I have a long history of infertility, infant loss. This was my fifth pregnancy for those of you that don't know my story. If you're watching, this is video is mostly for friends and family who are just interested in what happened and how we found out and all those kind of things. So I wasn't going to share any of this. I felt like my posts on Facebook were enough, but I've been feeling pushed to make this video for anyone who may be interested for any questions or anything like that. I'm a pretty open book, so I'm very willing to share. It's not that I'm hesitant, but just didn't know if anyone cared. So, but I've been feeling lately that I need to share kind of our experience and what happened. If you are new and aren't familiar with any of our history. We've lost a total of eight children. I have an incompetent cervix. You are interested in any of that history. I'll post that link down below. You can click on that and you'll get the whole spill of everything. So basically for a lot of you, you know that I've been having health issues for a while, mainly with my anxiety, but also just physically for a long time, I've just felt that things have been off and it happened ever since my first pregnancy. That just kind of switched something in my body and I've just been struggling for a long time just to feel good and feel normal. Um, and so while living here in North Carolina, we found a functional medicine doctor that I was working with. And back in July is when I started my supplements. December time came around, so I'd been on my supplements for about six months. Uh, we were visiting family in Utah for a couple of weeks. And during that time, so I was found to have H. pylori infection. We were going to start tackling that and getting rid of that. So the supplement I was on, one of the side effects was nausea. And so I started that while we were in Utah um visiting family and i was just really tired and nauseous and just wasn't feeling good you know john and i we haven't been pregnant for four years so it's been a long time okay with that like really happy with our life content with everything that we've been given and we're open to you know being pregnant if it came along but also we were just like we're fine you know life's good but every now and then if i'm late i'll just get a feeling like eh, maybe i should take a test but like I said, four years, they've all been negative. Same thing, we were at my parents' house and we were like, well, let's just go get a pregnancy test. I took it and it ended up being positive. And when I tell you, John and I both like freaked out. We, we freaked out. We were not expecting that. And I really believe that the supplements that I've been on for the past six months was the reason. We didn't have, you know, we weren't planning for it. We weren't taking any infertility meds that I had to do with my past pregnancies. I just knew it was my supplements. So we were both pretty shocked. Yeah, next day we flew home, just kind of started from there. Pretty soon, like after I found out, I got so like really sick, like nausea, which I wasn't expecting, but my nausea was really bad. It felt like it did with the triplets that I had even worse, like, or possibly even worse. Hard to say, cause it's all so blurry and fuzzy of when I was sick before, but I was sick like nonstop. It was worse in the evenings, nothing helped. Luckily I never had to go get IV fluids, but I was really sick. Thrown up multiple times a day, having a hard time eating anything. You know, I was eating the most terrible things and the most basic carby things that you can when you're pregnant. But I was also really stressed. We just didn't know what to do. We'd had a failed, um, basic cerclage placed in the past with the triplets and we were just like this is our last pregnancy like we want it to last if we're gonna do this then we're gonna make it foolproof you know as possible so we decided to get a tack or a transabdominal cerclage placed and luckily we found a doctor in north carolina um who was about three hours away from us who was willing to do the surgery just not a lot of doctors who are willing to do it. And so when I was about 11 weeks is when I went in um, to have my tack placed. I'm gonna post some of those videos. Just so you can see what it was like. It was really miserable. 
uh, the post-op, the going in and getting everything done. So I'm gonna share some of those videos now and then I'll talk a little bit more the recovery and what happened after. All right, so we made it to Greensboro. We got here last night, um, stayed in a hotel. My surgery for my transabdominal cerclage is today. So yeah, we're here in Greensboro, North Carolina to have that surgery. We just cross our fingers, all goes well. Hopefully they'll do an ultrasound to make sure that we still have a baby with a heartbeat. And then yeah, we'll have my cerclage. I can't believe we're here again and doing this again. Feels like just yesterday I was getting my other cerclage. Feel okay. Uh, of course, don't feel like great um, just because we haven't been able to eat this morning and with my nausea and stuff and my anxiety, I just don't do well when I don't eat. So I've been a little shaky today and kind of nauseous, but it's fine. We're almost there. And yeah, I'm sure John will give some updates on how things are going. So Catherine's in surgery right now. Um, they took her back for an hour and then they let me go back with her after that to wait like they were getting her ready and getting her uh, prepared for surgery. And that took about an hour and then I went back and I've been sitting with her for about the last two hours. Um, and now they're actually taking her back. So um, had kind of a rough experience going back, I guess. The lady who was kind of putting in the IV hit a nerve on her hand that, that hurt pretty bad and then that made her nauseous and so didn't have the best experience getting ready, but I think things are better now. It should take about an hour. Hopefully they, they start really quick and I should hear from them soon and uh, or within the hour anyways and just gonna go over maybe get something to eat. Uh, I don't know, record record what we're doing. So Catherine's uh, yeah, a little nervous, a little stressed. She doesn't like surgeries and, and things, but um, anyways, grateful, grateful for the medical people who, the doctors and the experts who make it possible. Hopefully she recovers quick and, and no issues. Alrighty, so it's day after my surgery. We're about an hour left in our drive. Today's been rough. My painkillers from the surgery yesterday have worn off. And so we've been trying to keep medicine in me, but one, I feel really tired and kind of short of breath, like lightheaded. My stomach hurts really bad. Like, you know, when you go to the gym and you come back and you're really sore, that's what it feels like, like times a hundred. It's just, sorry, it's hot. Um, Really sore, hard for me to stand up, hard for me to roll over. Anyway, it's been a little rough, if you can't tell, I don't, I don't feel very good. I'm gonna try my best to take all my medicine, keep pain down, start my Zofran. Been a wild ride, I tell ya. I don't wanna do that again ever. Anyway, just thought I'd give an update. I'm just gonna go home after and rest. And I'm supposed to get up and walk when I can to prevent, you know, blood clots and get rid of all the gas from the anesthesia. I've been having pain in my shoulders from that. And, um, it's supposed to help loosen the muscles too if I go for a walk. So yeah, I'm just gonna me trying to survive for the next couple days. Anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. So yeah, as you can see, it was really hard. I was in a lot of pain, like my stomach, like it just, yeah, it was really painful. Like I said in the video, the lady, the nurse, when she was drawing blood, got my radial nerve. I had just like weakness and pain, numbness. I still have some numbness right here. And that's, it's been about a month since my TAC surgery. Um, but that brought me a lot of distress, um, worried about my hand, um, worried that it wasn't going to get better. Um, I had a horrible yeast bacteria infection that came afterwards. And then I also got a rash on my stomach from the prep that they put on you to prevent infection. So I just had all these horrible things that happened that made it really difficult. The next Friday, I had to go in for my 12-week ultrasound. Both John, when we saw, got our picture printed from the ultrasound, we were just like, well, that's a terrible ultrasound. Like, we can't even see the baby. But come to find out, they found that I had low amniotic fluid, which just basically means all the fluid surrounding the baby was, it was gone, which is really harmful for the baby, for the mother. My OB wanted us to go see maternal fetal medicine um, the next Wednesday. After that appointment, I was just... I was shattered. Like I just, I knew it wasn't gonna work. Like I just knew something was off. It was wrong. I was like heartbroken, devastated, um, emotionally to just know that, you know, the likelihood of this pregnancy not working out again for the fifth time. Um, 
it just, it, it broke me. And I wanted to be, you want to be hopeful, but also realistic at the same time. And I just knew that like, it wasn't going to be good news. So after that Friday, when I kind of grieved and got that out of my system, it was just a waiting game. My mom came out, we had told her what happened and she flew out and came to stay with us. And she was a huge help just the past, you know, two weeks that she was here. But we went in the next Wednesday to the high-risk doctor and same thing, the high-risk doctor came and said, you just have no fluid. It didn't, like sometimes like the uterus will fill itself back up or the amniotic sac will fill itself back up, but mine didn't. They didn't really know why. Uh, we still don't really know why. The surgeon who did my, my tack, we talked to him about it and they were worried that there was like a puncture or something that like when he was moving, like just going in there with his instruments that he poked the sack. But he was really like, he's like, I just, he's like, I do ultrasound while I'm doing it. And he said, and I didn't see anything like your surgery went perfectly. He was pretty sure that it wasn't him that did it. Other causes could be genetic, which we did. Um, I ended up, so I had to go to the hospital that same day. Luckily they had an opening to get me in and we did the DNC the same day at the hospital. So they did do genetic testing because that can cause issues, but it's really rare to have low amniotic fluid first trimester. So there's not a lot of research on that, but based on my surgeon does believe it wasn't probably an effect of the surgery. He said sometimes, cause he has to like move the uterus over to be able to get to the cervix to put the, the band. And he said sometimes like it could have created a weak spot in your uterus to where it could have created a hole that way. He just said in his 20 years of doing this, he's never seen this happen ever. And of course, nothing about my life is normal uh, as far as pregnancy goes. So that didn't surprise me at all. But yeah, they just, we honestly just probably won't ever know what happened. And that's fine, you know? We, I don't know, we just both accepted that, you know, it was another bump in the road and yeah, it sucks. And I had an awful two or three months, you know, before that, that I wish I wouldn't have had to gone through because now I'm, my body's just struggling to get back to normal again. So that was frustrating, you know, before all this happened, before we got pregnant, we were, you know, always open to it, but I had come to a place spiritually, emotionally, mentally, where I really had accepted that maybe my opportunity to be a mom in this life just wasn't was it gonna happen for me which i honestly like i came to terms with that and i have felt fine we both have just moved on with our lives you know we really enjoy all the experiences that we have and our jobs and serving in our community and church that we've been able to take part in you know we just we've been okay with it. And for me, that's just kind of the bittersweet that happened with this pregnancy also. I'd kind of closed that door before I even got pregnant with this baby. I'm kind of just, my after everything, you know, happened, I just kind of went back to that mindset. Yeah, like we would have been happy to have had a child, but also I'm still like okay with not being a mom in this life. I do believe that I, you know, based on my religious beliefs that I will, have my babies in the next life and that it's not the end you know it's just a waiting game until i get to see them but just don't know why i had to have this random pregnancy for these you know couple months now i get to go back to work and normal life i'm feeling really good um despite you know my normal anxiety which i've always had um that's always a work in progress but as far as what's next for us um i think that's the biggest question a lot of people have is kind of where we're at so i do have my tax still in place they didn't have to remove it to do the dnc which is different most of the time with your basics or clodge they have to remove it but this one i can leave in for life so technically if john and i got pregnant again I wouldn't have to do the tax surgery. I would just have to go through the pregnancy, but I don't know. Um, I know I don't owe anyone an explanation, but I think it's helpful just for people to know kind of where we're at. Just with how hard pregnancy is on me. Like I just was so concerned about like the later, just what if the tack didn't work, you know, or what if I ended up getting like diabetes or high blood pressure? Like there's so many complications that can come and it's already just so hard on me that I'm really okay with having any more babies. Thing between John and me, what we're gonna decide um, and God, you know, is this our time to just kind of end it? And so that's just kind of where we're at. We're just ready to move on and get back to normal life and 
what God has in store for us now. And we really are okay. And I, you know, I want to be truthful and say like, we honestly are fine. And a lot of people I think are, you know, really shocked. Like, how can you guys be fine? Like with everything you've been through and you know, it's ultimately our faith. It's in our mindset. Like I've just been able to come to that acceptance, like through that grief process, you know, everyone goes through the grief process differently. And I certainly have my own challenges from my trauma and what I've been through, but it's more the mental anxiety rather than the depression that comes from the loss of children. So I have my share of struggles. Um, life isn't easy, you know, it's been a rough last couple years with my anxiety um, and agoraphobia. I haven't been able to drive for a year and a half, really. I'm just, I, it's hard for me to go in public places. Like I, I have my own battles and I have my own weaknesses and struggles. So I don't by any means want anyone who feels like they are struggling with the loss um, to feel um, that that's not okay. You know, everyone grieves differently. Everyone has their process of, you know, dealing with these hard things. And my heart goes out to anyone who goes through this. I want I want to wish it, you know, on anybody. I just hope that everyone knows that it's okay where you're at. Um, also, like I said before, I'm an open book. So if anyone does have just any questions in general, like you can reach out to me anytime um, and ask me any questions. Mostly we just want to, you know, say thanks to everyone who did pray for us when we shared, you know, that we were pregnant and we really appreciate the prayers and support through the years and everything. So I know this isn't, we haven't done like a fun video in a while, but um, like I said at the beginning, I just really, I felt like I needed to share and hopefully I didn't mumble too much and I shared um, everything that I meant to share um, and that it's helpful for some of you watching just to kind of get an idea of what happened. And so yeah, but hopefully in the next couple months um, we can make some fun videos of stuff that we're doing. We have a lot going on at the house. We have fun trips that we want to do this year. Yeah, life's good and uh, we love you all and thanks for the support and um, 